It's very exciting. It's kind of what um, the premiers used to be, and uh, maybe what they'll uh, be again someday. It's kind of fun for audiences and the people outside and uh, just everybody in general. That was actor Gene Hackman at the 1972 premiere of The Godfather, which opened in theaters 50 years ago this month. The event for everyone from Raquel Welch to Henry Kissinger. If you've seen Francis Ford Coppola's epic recently on TV, you know it holds up as well as ever. It's also been re-released in theaters, restored to its original glory. To get a new backstory of the film, we spoke with the author of a book that takes its title from one of the movie's most famous lines, leave the gun, take the cannoli. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Godfather. Instead, you come into my house on the day my daughter's to be married and you ask me to do murder, money. For me, it's the greatest movie of all time. I was a 19-year-old college freshman when I saw the film for the first time in Memphis, Tennessee, and I walked into the theater a kid and I walked out an adult. Mark Seal spent more than a decade researching and writing a story about the film that changed his life. A film that began as a book written by Mario Puzo. The Godfather was based more than anything else on Puzo's mother, who raised her kids in New York City's Hell's Kitchen. By the time Maria Puzo's fifth child hit middle age, Mario was a down-on-his-luck gambling addict, having tried and failed to make it as a writer countless times, until he finally struck gold. An editor asked me to come up, and so I went up there, and I just told him a few mafia stories that I knew. And they gave me an advance and told me to go ahead. The backstory of how Puzo came to write The Godfather and how Francis Ford Coppola turned it into a film classic are detailed in Seal's Leave the Gun, Take the Cannoli, the epic story of the making of The Godfather. Francis Coppola took that novel and transported it to the screen. And so, so much of what Mario Puzo wrote is now The Godfather, but Coppola also dr dramatized it so much. What the hell is this? It means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. Famously, the studio making it Paramount didn't want Coppola as director. They didn't want Marlon Brando as the Don. They didn't want Al Pacino as Michael. What was it about Pacino's performance for you? Well, because it starts off gradually. You don't know who he is. Uh, Pacino said he saw uh, the power of the role was in the transition of it. So you see Michael develop from a you know college boy, military man, and then just explodes with the, that killing in Louis' American restaurant in the Bronx. <laughs> If the studio had gotten what they wanted, and a completely different cast, and a different director, would Godfather have had any of the success that it had? Yeah, it's hard to imagine, right? I want you to rest well, and a month from now, this Hollywood big shot's gonna give you what you want. In the end, Coppola got exactly what he wanted. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. And his decisions represented triumphs for then little-known stars like Pacino, Diane Keaton, and Talia Shire, who rounded out the cast along with more established actors like Robert Duvall and James Caan. Come Come in. You're taking us very first. But casting battles weren't the only issue. Ah! Ah! As Seal writes about, New York City's most prominent real gangster, Joe Colombo, almost got the film killed. Why did Columbo want to shut down the movie? Well, because he was on a campaign against the stereotyping of Italian Americans in popular culture. And he thought the word mafia symbolized everything that was wrong with the stereotyping of Italian Americans. And of course, Puzo's novel was originally titled Mafia. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, The Godfather soon became uh, something that they wanted to stop because they thought it was gonna be a, a stereotypical movie about gangsters. Look how they mess with my boy. Producers of the movie met with Columbo and agreed to take the word mafia out of the script. With or without those forbidden words, the shooting in The Godfather should take several months, 
Once filming started, shooting delays pushed the original opening back from Christmas 1971. Well, I haven't got time. Uh, make time, consigliere. Coppola and Paramount's legendary head, Robert Evans, argued endlessly over the edit. In March 1972, The Godfather was ready for its premiere. Nobody thought this was going to be this juggernaut that it became. The guests in the Lowe's State Theater, after the credits rolled, after three hours, there was not a sound. It was stunned silence. And Robert Evans thought, it's a bomb. You know, nobody's saying a word. There's no applause. But what turned out was they were stunned beyond belief into silence. And that happened across America. The Godfather went on to become, at the time, the highest grossing film ever made. It won three Oscars, including Best Picture, and eventually went into permanent rotation on cable TV for decades. Albert Ruddy, the producer, said there's only one and only one reason. Yeah. It was ever a success because it's about family. That's right. We had seen these men as gangsters, but we didn't know that they were family men. I am honored and grateful that you have invited me to your home. You know, how does the movie start? It starts with a wedding. And may that first child be a masculine child. The title of your book, it's not in the, fr the original book, but it's in the movie. Right. Why choose that title? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Well, for me, it, it says everything about the movie because, first of all, Richard Castellano says the line that was in the script, leave the gun. But then he remembers what his wife told him on the stoop that morning. Don't forget the cannoli. The movie is about the gun. The movie is about the gangsters. The movie is about the violence. But also the movie is about the cannoli, the family, the food, the fellowship, the fathers and sons, the American dream. So to me, that just says everything about The Godfather. And for the record here, we did not forget the cannoli. The cannoli? cannoli? <laughs> Courtesy of our senior broadcast producer, Tony D. Polver, straight from Court Pastry Shop in Brooklyn it. since 1948. There it is. And you got it in front of you, too. Yeah, that's you know, right. How is it? Such a rite of passage, I have to say. I've already taken my bite. Nice. But when I saw The Godfather, I felt like, ooh, I had arrived. I understood adulthood. I understood America. I, you know, it was yeah. like one of those rites of passage as a young woman into the male-dominated world. And you know what? It's not about the masculine child. It's about the feminine child. Yeah, Luca, that's, I mean, that's, that's what Mark Seal said. He said he went into the movie right. 19 years old. He was a kid, walked out. There it is. An I, adult. Yeah. I wonder if kids still feel like if, if somebody saw it 50 years later, like if a 17-year-old mm. kid saw it. I don't know. Can I admit a dirty little secret to you guys? You haven't seen it? No I've way. You are not going to Oh, my <laughs> gosh. But now I will. There it is. Not unusual. All right.